Alright guys, welcome back to another video. This is going to be a probably 16 episode let's play where we are playing the Soviet Union once again. Uh, I only have 16 days because well I will be going on a so-called vacation again. So I will not be here. I am currently recording on I think it's the 8th of December and I only have about those 16 days just about the before uh, before Christmas is when I will go there. So we're going to be playing the Soviet Union and we'll try to, well probably the goal is to do a world revolution and now how successful we will be at it I have no idea but at the very minimum I will try to take at least a couple of countries get some at least pretty good influence in Europe and uh, some pretty good influence in Asia too. I will try to establish myself as a dominant and probably strongest power in the world as well. So world revolution is the altogether goal but I guess we'll see how well we will do in those 16 days. I will be uploading every single day while I am gone. So we have the commentary doctrine it uh, has some increased unit production speeds and stuff like that it has great artillery it has great infantry it has great heavy tanks now these aren't the most mobile units but they are good units and they will do the job now we might want some more mobile units but i don't think that's gonna work out in the long run uh because yeah strength and I can't be rushing SP artillery with motorized and medium tanks as the Soviet Union as I am giving up every single buff that my doctrine has which is absolutely retarded. Now I can't go motorized and then regular artillery either which artillery is really buffed here with the commentary doctrine because uh, the artillery just slowed the division down and that just not worth it. So. We will be going artillery, infantry and heavy tanks, it's not too good on the offensive but it will definitely do the job rather well. These heavy tanks are gonna destroy the hell out of the German mediums if we ever fight them. Now that's gonna be the plan here, research heavy tanks already and we're gonna get level 2 infantry. We're gonna try to advance our levels really quickly and we're gonna try to militarize the country. Another thing we're gonna have to do is build up our economy i'm gonna build up mostly these five places it's gonna be the most important thing to do so we're gonna be building up that industry as much as we can in these five areas in the other places here we aren't building industry however we'll be building a lot of units now in all of these at the start i'm gonna make a bunch of infantry uh, i'm gonna have to upgrade them later but that's fine with me I'm also gonna make a bunch of artillery and uh, there we go we already are making an insane amount of stuff we'll have to upgrade them but uh, that's not such a big a deal we're not gonna be making any tanks yet since we'll be waiting the heavies now there's two coalitions that doesn't really matter i'm not gonna be forming my own coalition i will try to do this mostly solo now on the Asian front I don't think I will focus on much, I might go after Manchuko, but uh, generally it's not gonna be worth going after Japan, if they will be active I will try uh, to sign a friendship treaty with them, I think that will be worth it, so I might go after Manchuko, Mongolia, Xinjiang, Tanatu and so on, I will probably take Persia, Afghanistan, uh, possibly even Turkey, and then here in Europe uh, let's say the Baltics, Scandinavia, Romania and uh, try to take Poland too unless Germany doesn't allow that to happen. So I'm currently gonna put most of my troops on the border with Persia, Romania and the Baltics so I can take them out early on since they should be pretty easy to take out. I might even uh, put my Siberian units on Manchukuo's border so I can take them out. They are pretty weak early on, very likely to go inactive and if Japan won't be a pain in the ass this will be a very very useful uh, region to control. Now considering the amount of units I have in this area I don't think I'm gonna be able to make such big offensives into Asia, not yet at least, so I'm gonna avoid that for now. So I'm gonna try to first control Persia trying to control the 
passage between Europe and Asia. This would probably give me some more control, make it easier to focus on uh, different fronts and give me more economy, uh, quite a lot actually. Since I'd be bordering mostly AI then it's got really some pressure as well and one less stronger nation on my border. So I'm gonna get a bunch of units, not that many though, over here to the border with Persia. So just a bunch of this, we won't need that many units, just a decent amount. Persia's army is very weak and very small at the start of the game, so I don't think this should be a big problem nor a big deal. I'm gonna get some militias too, they can help and they surely will. I take some of these militias and put them on the Turkish border too. I want this secured. Militias are very good at defending in mountains. So uh, if they attack, I can hold for a decent amount of time, I think. For the rest of the units, well, we have some here. I think that's gonna be enough for Persia. I'm gonna put a bunch on the border here. So something like this, I think that should be enough. I don't wanna completely demilitarize the border with Poland, even if I would need the units, but still that's not gonna be a smart thing to do. So hopefully that will be enough for Romania, I'm still not sure, but I think with the reinforcements that I will, well, that I am currently producing, I think that will be enough to, to take out Romania if I bring them there too, let's take one artillery at least though. I'm gonna keep this in Minsk, and I'm gonna take this from Moscow, and all the other units in the area, put them on the border with Estonia. Using our air force and stuff, I will uh, try to take out Estonia tomorrow. I think that will be enough units. Gonna bring a little more too from other areas of the world. Alright, so uh, we have this amount for Romania. I might, or, or I probably will attack Persia tomorrow, same with Estonia. And I might also attack. Romania if I have the units already, I think I will, I will bring some uh, infantry and uh, artillery I am producing here in Ukraine over to the Romanian border taking them out early on, then I will bring more to the Baltics as well taking Latvia and uh, Lithuania. With that I already be building a large part of Eastern Europe, then I will try to invade Poland if they haven't been invaded by Germany yet. If I take all of that, I will already have a massive economy, so that's a good plan. I will just keep a production militarized the hell out of the Soviet Union, I think I will be able to even take out the Germany in a couple of days if I play this right, if they do become a threat of course. Anyway, that might just be it for this video, that's the plan so far, I will probably try to take out Germany pretty early on if they are a threat, if not I will just continue in the Balkans taking Hungary, Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, Greece, Turkey, they are all pretty damn weak so it's gonna be easily possible. Same with a bit of focus on Scandinavia. Let's not forget about Siberia too, this is a very important front uh, since a large part of our economy is here because of Novosibirsk, Krasnoyarsk and Vladivostok, so gotta keep that in mind. Anyway, since our economy is massive, I think this is going to be pretty damn possible. Anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow, and yeah, see you then.